Hello everyone, welcome to Hike Back, which is a visual horror novel, which is something I haven't done in a long time, but I've always enjoyed doing visual horror novels, so we'll see how this goes. Let me tell you a story. It was late that night, I was driving through some backwoods to visit a friend, then I spotted something on the side of the road. That's when I first saw you sticking your thumb out looking for a lift. So I decided to stop and help you out. The night was so dark that I could barely see your face, but I managed to catch a glimpse of you through my faded headlights. Your front was smeared with a dirt and grim, and your hair stuck out in every direction. You asked me for a ride to the next town over. I said yes. I watched you climb into the back seat. We rode together in silence for miles. There was no radio signal out here, so music wasn't much of an option. I could barely hear you breathing. Sometimes, I forgot you were there at all. I could feel myself starting to nod off. The dust in the headlights swam in lazy streams. And just as I started to drift away, something pierced through my stomach. Your arms were around my waist from behind the seat, your fingers clutching a bloody scalpel. My throat closed up, my mind went blank. My senses screaming, I lost control of the wheel. My head was pounding. Needles prickled across my skin, cut with shattered bone and shrapnel. Every breath I took was harder than the last. There was no one else in these woods. There was no one around to help. I was going to die here. Next to me, I could see you coughing up blood. Your arms were embedded with broken glass. I asked you why you did it. There was no point. After all, now we're both going to die with no one around to find our bodies. You gave me a wiry smile as my vision faded to black. You spoke with a voice like gravel and serrated teeth. You told me that you couldn't help it. It was in your nature. Let me tell you a story. My name's not important, never liked it much anyways. I was driving that night to visit a friend on the other side of the mountains. I'd never met them in person before, but they needed my help, that was all that mattered. This place was really out in the middle of nowhere, though. Not a sign of civilization to be seen. I was messing around with the radio when I saw you. A scrawny thing in dirty clothes sticking your thumb out. So I... I decided to stop. I don't get any other options. So I decided to stop. What the hell, you know? I felt bad for you. Maybe you really needed the help. I don't think I could have lived with myself if I had abandoned someone in a bad spot. So I flashed my headlights and pulled over beside you. As soon as I got out of the car, I could tell I made the right call. You look like shit. The knees of your pants were all scrapped and your whole body was smudged with dirt. You needed help badly. Hey, you alright? Where are you heading? He looked at me with a blank stare, as if I was saying nothing but meaningless noise. I sighed and took a step forward. You eyed me warily. Look, you need a ride, right? If I'm taking you somewhere, then you can at least give me a direction. You seem con to consider this for a while. You ran your fingernails up and down your arms, as if you were scratching at something. After a bit, you finally looked at me in the eyes. Is there a town nearby? I could tell just by listening to you that you desperately needed a drink. Unfortunately, I didn't think the half empty soda sitting in my cup holder would cut it. Nearby? Uh, not for a while yet, but there should be a gas station at the next exit, about 20 minute drive or so. You chewed your lip in silence. Do you want me to take you there? You nodded, slowly. Please. So I stepped back towards the car and opened the door to the... Hmm... We'll go with the passenger seat. 
So I opened the door to the passenger side. You seemed harmless enough and there was no point in being rude. You didn't move. Uh, everything okay? Still nothing. I figured you were just nervous. I didn't blame you. This was a pretty weird situation. Then noticed you were mumbling something under your breath. Not the... Hey, no worries if it's too much, okay? If you want, I can always call a police station nearby. No. A refusal so quick I had to take a second to even register it. Um, you sure? Must have struck a nerve. Without another word, you brushed past me and slid inside. I tried to give your shoulder a reassuring pat as you got in. As reassuring as I could manage, anyway. You almost hit your head on the roof when my hand made contact. Hey. What? Seatbelt. And no response. I glanced over my shoulder and pointed at the belt buckle. Put it on. I'm not moving this car until you do. You blinked at me slowly before pulling on the seatbelt. You examined it like it was a foreign object as you crossed it over your waist and hooked it into the buckle. With a sigh, I turned back toward the wheel and started up the engine. The radio still wasn't working. It was really starting to piss me off. I guess there wasn't much signal that far out. And all the while, you hardly made a sound. It was like you weren't even in there. But you were, I checked, quiet as a corpse, with your cheek pressed against the window. We drove for miles, endless stretches of the same road, same trees, the same dark ex expanse. For all we knew, we could have been driving in place. Things started getting blurry. My eyelids were heavy from the weight of all the hours on the road. I didn't want to risk falling asleep at the wheel, so I went ahead and downed the last of my energy drink. It was long since flat. The sugar and gunk and artificial flavors all stuck to my teeth. Gross. I needed something more substantial to keep me awake. Music would have been fine, but the radio still refused to cooperate. What to do? All right. As I heard you shuffling around your seat, I realized that some friendly conversation could definitely keep me up. I hardly knew anything about you after all. You were just a total stranger. No harm in breaking the ice, right? So I glanced over towards you and spoke. Hey, so what are you? I managed to see your scalpel seconds before it went straight through my eye. The next thing I knew, we were both crashing through the windshield. slipped out of my fingers and we crashed straight into something. My head was pounding. The muck that was left in my eye leaked down my chin. The only thing that kept me from passing out was the pain. Needles pricked across my skin, cut with shattered bone and shrapnel. Every breath I took was harder than the last. There was no one else in these woods. There was no one around to help. I was going to die here. Next to me, I heard you yelp in pain. Through the blood, I saw your leg twisted in ways it never should be. This was the end for both of us. But instead of screaming, crying, begging for my life, all I could feel was anger. My mouth started moving before my thoughts could. What the fuck is wrong with you? Every word tasted like iron. Because of this, because of you, now we're both dead. Even with my sight melting away, I felt your eyes boring into me. Is that... Is this... What you wanted? Your head lolled to the side as you choked and gasped, wiping your mouth on your arm. The veins in your neck bulged. I could see them clearly now. I wanted to wrap my hands around your throat and squeeze more than I've ever wanted anything else in my entire life. No. Then, 
Why? I pounced on your response like a rabid animal. I had to know. I deserved to. I heard your nails scrape across the gravel, hair curtaining your face. Who? What? You cleared your throat and tried again. Your voice was thick with blood. Whose fault is this? Answer me. Whose fault? Who is to blame for this ending? The one to blame is... I see you. I would... If you stabbed me, why would you stab me? You, obviously. You stabbed me in the fucking eye. What possible... I had gotten too heated. I had to take a second to wheeze, feeling my lungs sting. What possible reason could you have had? None. I stopped in my tracks, mouth hung open like a dead fish. What? There was no reason. No reason at all. Because it was not a reasonable thing to do. Somehow it felt like you were speaking much clearer all of a sudden. And I saw movement in your direction. Were you standing up? I did it because I am a bad person. That is all there is to it. I couldn't keep the eye I had left open any longer. Even as my mind raced, I felt someone, you, right next to me. A creeping heat that seemed goosebumps running up my neck. Because for people like me, I heard the smile in your voice. It's in my nature. Okay, then I would much rather prefer not picking him up. I'm just not going to pick him up now. Let's see what happens. You just never learn, do you? Now I want to keep picking him up just to see what happens. Not like that. Let me tell you a story. My name is not important. Never liked it much anyways. I was driving that night to visit a friend on the other side of the mountains. I never met them in person before, but they needed my help. That was all that mattered. This place was really out in the middle of nowhere though. Not a sign of civilization to be seen. My windshield has gotten cracked somehow. No clue when that happened. It was no big deal. The car had already seen much better days and no little crack wouldn't do any more harm. Even though I didn't remember having it. I was messing around with the radio when I saw you. A scrawny thing in dirty clothes, sticking your thumb out. So I, I kept driving. So I kept driving right on. I kept right on driving, like hell I was falling for that. A stranger out here in the middle of bumfuck nowhere asking for a lift, are you kidding? Call me superstitious, but that sounded like the beginning of a ghost story. And I sure as hell wasn't planning on dying anytime soon. I still felt your eyes on me as I sped past you all the way down the road. I never saw you again. Well, I guess that's how you win <laughs> common sense that's funny i'm gonna put him in the back seat and we'll see what happens maybe if i let me tell you a story my name's not important never liked it much anyways i was driving that night to visit a friend on the other side of the mountains i'd never met him in person before but they needed help and that was all that mattered this place was really out in the middle of nowhere the not a sign of civilization to be seen. My windshield had gotten a crack smell, no clue when that happened. It was no big deal. The car had already seen much better days, and one little crack wouldn't do any harm, even though I didn't remember having it. I was messing around with the radio when I saw you. A scrawny thing in dirty clothes, sticking your thumb out. So I decided to stop. So I decided to stop. What the hell, you know? I felt bad for you. Maybe you really needed the help. I don't think I could have lived with myself if I had abandoned someone in a bad spot. So I flashed my headlights and pulled over beside you. As soon as I got out of the car, I could tell I made the right call. 
You looked like shit. The knees of your pants were all scuffed, and your whole body was smudged with dirt. You needed help, badly. Hey, you alright? Where are you heading? You looked at me with a blank stare as if I was saying nothing but meaningless noise. I sighed and took a step forward. You eyed warily. Look, you need a ride, right? If I'm taking you somewhere, then the least you can do is give me a direction. You seemed to consider this for a while. You ran your fingernails up and down your arms as if you were scratching at something. After a bit, you finally looked at me in the eyes. Is this... is there a town nearby? I could tell just by listening to you that you desperately needed a drink. Unfortunately, I didn't think the half-empty soda sitting in my cup holder would cut it. Nearby, uh, not for a while yet, but there should be a gas station at the next exit, about a 20-minute drive or so. You chewed your lip in silence. Do you want me to take you there? You nodded slowly. Please. So I stepped back toward the car and opened the door to the back seat. So I opened the door to the back seat, better safe than sorry. You stared at me for only a moment before climbing inside. Hey. What? Seatbelt. And no response. I turned around in my seat and pointed at the belt buckle. Put it on. I'm not moving this car until you do. You rolled your eyes as you tugged on a seatbelt as if we'd had this conversation before. With a sigh, I turned back towards the wheel and started up the engine. The radio still wasn't working. It was really starting to piss me off. I guess there wasn't much signal out that far. And all the while, you hardly made a sound. It was like you weren't even there. We drove for miles, endless stretches on the same road, the same trees, the same dark expanse. For all we knew, we could have been driving in place. Things started getting blurry. My eyelids were heavy from the weight of all the hours on the road. I didn't want to risk falling asleep at the wheel, so I... Huh? The can was completely empty. Weird. I'd been so sure that I still had some left. When I did drink it, had I forgotten somehow? I tried to shake the weird sense of deja vu from my head and keep my eyes on the road. Still nothing from the back seat. I adjusted my rearview mirror so I could get a look at what you were up to. I could barely see a thing. My throat closed up. What I had been thinking, letting you in my car. I had no idea who you were, what you wanted, or what you were capable of. For all I knew, you could be hiding my body in the highway ditch somewhere by morning. You were just a total stranger. How far were we to somewhere safe? If something happened, would anyone come to help? And as these thoughts swarmed my head, I heard you moving around in the back seat. My chest felt tight as a panic surged inside me. I swore that I could feel your breath on my neck. Were you about to kill me? I had to do something now. So I... So I spoke up. My mouth suddenly felt dry. With a deep breath, I spoke. What do you think you're doing? And it is almost as soon as the word left my mouth. <laughs> Your arms wrapped around my chest from behind and something cold, sharp pressed against my neck. I am merely taking precautionary measures. I gripped the steering wheel as if it was my last chance. Blood roared in my head. One flinch, one speed bump. That's all it would take for the stranger to slit my throat. As I swallowed, my skin sank a bit deeper into the blade. How? How so? Simple. You could stop this car and kill me at any time, or drop me off somewhere to rot in captivity. If you so wished, you could even crash this car and watch me burn, safe behind an airbag. That didn't seem like the best time to mention that I took the airbags out of this thing years ago, but this way you cannot kill me without killing yourself, and in turn I cannot kill you without killing myself either. Thus, we are even. Does that make sense? You waited for an answer. It doesn't really make sense at all because I'm no danger to him. I gave him a ride. I picked him up. I couldn't help it. My temper flared. Like hell that makes sense. The fuck are you even talking about? Why would you do something like that right after stopping to help you? 
not to mention risk getting killed myself. I was just trying to show you a bit of kindness, that's all. I took a second to catch my breath. I wasn't even sure where all that came from. You were waiting patiently for me to finish. After a few moments, you spoke again. Kindness, you say. Yeah, heard of it. You even consider that maybe, just maybe, all I wanted was to be nice. And a fat lot of good that did me. Now you're threatening to kill me for it. I felt your fingers wrap against my shoulder in a steady rhythm. You took a while to respond this time. We are strangers, are we not? Strangers who have absolutely no reason to trust one another. Such as why you led me to this seat rather than the one beside you. You did not trust me enough to be close to you. It was a wise decision. I would have done the same. And yet, despite being total strangers, you offered to drive me out of the forest. Now why might that be? You had no way of knowing that I possessed a blade. No indication that I could possibly be a threat to you. For all that you could tell, I was completely and utterly defenseless. And even now, I cannot hope to kill you without killing myself as well. You lean forward, your lips ghost right against my ear. From the very beginning, I have been at your mercy. Now, is this what you would call kindness? I couldn't bring myself to speak. You clicked your tongue. Well then, if so... Then you're just as bad as I am, aren't you? Kinship ending three. What else could I do? I could try to do something after the car. It... It hurts. Let me tell you a story. My name's not important, never liked it much anyway, so I was driving the night to visit a friend on the other side of the mountain. I'd never met in person before, but they needed help and that was all that mattered. This place was really out in the middle of nowhere, though, and not a sign of civilization to be seen. My windshield had gotten a crack somehow, no clue where that happened. It was no big deal, the car had already seen much better days, and one little crack wouldn't do any more harm, even though I didn't remember having it. I was messing around with the radio when I saw you, a scrawny little thing in dirty clothes, sticking your thumb out. So I decided to stop. So I decided to stop. What the hell, you know? I felt bad for you. Maybe you really needed the help. I don't think I could have lived with myself if I had abandoned someone in a bad spot. So I flashed my headlights, pulled over beside you. As soon as I got out of the car, I could tell I made the right call. You looked like shit, the knees of your pants were all scuffed, and your whole body it was smudged with dirt. I could even see blood trickling out of your nose. You needed help, badly. Hey, you alright? Where are you heading? You looked at me with a blank stare, as if I was saying nothing but meaningless noise. I sighed and took a step forward. You eyed warily. Look, you need a ride, right? If I'm taking you somewhere, then can you at least give me a direction? You seemed to consider this for a while. You ran your fingernails up and down your arms, as if you were scratching at something. After a bit, you finally looked at me in the eyes. Is there a town nearby? I could tell just by listening to you that you desperately needed a drink. Unfortunately, I didn't think the half-empty soda sitting in my cup holder would cut it. Nearby? Uh, not for a while yet. But there should be a gas station at the next exit. About a 20-minute drive or so. You chewed your lip in silence. Do you want me to take you there? You nodded slowly. Please. So I stepped back towards the car and opened the back seat. So up in the back seat, better safe than sorry. You stared at me for only a moment, climbing to the seat. Hey. What? Seat belt. No response. I turn around my seat, pointing it at the belt buckle. Put it on. I'm not moving the car until you do. You rolled your eyes and tugged the seat belt as if we'd had this conversation before. With a sigh, I turned back started to the wheel and started up the engine. The radio still wasn't working. It was really starting to piss me off. I guess there wasn't much signal that far out. And all the while, you hardly made a sound. It was like you weren't even there. We drove for miles, endless stretches on the same road, same trees, same dark expanse. For all we knew, we could have been driving in place. Things were starting to get blurry. My eyelids were heavy from the weight of all the hours on the road. I didn't want to risk falling asleep at the wheel, so I... Huh. The can was completely empty. Weird. I'd been so sure I still had some left. 
When did I drink it? Had I forgotten somehow? Tried to shake the weird sense of deja vu in my head and keep my eyes on the road. Still nothing from the back seat. I just my review to get a look at what you were up to. I could barely see a thing. My throat closed up. What had I been thinking letting you in my car? I had no idea who you were, what you wanted, or what you were capable of. For all I knew, you could be hiding my body in the highway ditch somewhere by the morning. You were just a total stranger. How far were we to somewhere safe if something happened when you wouldn't come? And as these thoughts swarmed my head, I heard you moving in the back seat. My chest felt tight as I panic surged inside of me. I swore that I could feel you breathing on my neck. Were you about to kill me? I had to do something now. So I... So I hit the brakes. I couldn't take it anymore. I needed you out of my car now. Without hesitation or warning, I veered off towards the side of the road and hit the brakes. Except, I didn't catch the tree in time. legs weren't moving. My arms weren't either. My body didn't do anything that I told it to, like in a dream or a nightmare. My head was pounding. All I could do was breathe, and that was getting harder by the second. It hurt, but eventually the pain all blended together like white noise, dull, comforting. Needles pricked across my skin, cut with shattered bone and shrapnel. There was no one else in these woods. There was no one around to help. I was going to die here. I managed to turn my head to the side just enough to see you lying in a crumpled heap. You were face down, blood pooling out from under your head. You weren't moving. This was the end for both of us. So I closed my eyes. You were going to kill me anyway. I just knew it somehow. A random stranger out in the middle of nowhere, all filthy, acting weird asking for a ride. Of course, you had to be a killer, or some kind of bad person, at least. Anyone else would have done the same. This was the only way things could have been. I did what I had to do in self-defense. Yeah, that was it. Self-defense. My breath shook. I did what I had to do. Right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This was a uh, first visual horror game i've done in a while i really enjoyed the story it was it was really good and uh all i had to get i had to get most of the endings there's there's too many questions to ask but uh thank you for watching if you enjoyed it make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more shit like this um have a good day